Good morning and welcome to Broadmeadow. No matter where you've come from or where you're going, what you believe or doubt, what you are feeling or just not feeling, what you have or don't have, and no matter whom you love, all of who you are is welcomed into this community of faith by a God who loves you passionately. Thanks be to God. Our opening hymn is Come Ye Thankful People Come, number 694 in the hymnal. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Please stand as we sing together. morning. There it is. How's everybody doing? Good? It's so good to see all of your faces this morning. Um, uh, God is just so good. It's been a great week and I hope you've had a great week and uh, I'm going to uh, just going just gonna to thank you this morning just for showing up and being here. Would you pray with me? Father God, thank you so much. Lord, the beautiful day that you've given us. Lord, it's not even hot outside. Lord, thank you. Thank you for the cool air that came in during the night. Lord, I pray that you would bless our service this morning. Lord, may you be glorified in everything that we say and do. Lord, every word that we speak, every song that we sing, Lord, may it just glorify your name. Lord, I thank you so much for, for each person here. I pray that you would allow your Holy Spirit to speak to us this morning. And Lord, let us leave this place knowing that we have been with the Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Would you join me as we read together our affirmation of faith, 881 in your hymnal, or it is printed in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
may be seated. Prayer for illumination. God, source of all light, by your word and by your word and you give light to the soul. Pour out upon us the spirit of wisdom and understanding, that being taught by you in holy scripture, our hearts and minds may be open to know the things that pertain to life and holiness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our Old Testament reading is from Genesis 28, 10 through 19. Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. He reached a certain place and spent the night there. When the sun had set, he took one of the stones at the place and put it near his head. Then he laid it down there. He dreamed and saw a raised staircase, its foundation on earth and its top touching the sky, and God's messengers were ascending and descending on it. Suddenly the Lord was standing on it, saying, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you descendants, I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will become like the dust of the earth. 
You will spread out to the west, east, north, and south. Every family of earth will be blessed because of you and your descendants. I'm with you now. I will protect you everywhere you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done everything that I have promised you. When Jacob woke up from his sleep, he thought to himself, The Lord is definitely in this place, but I didn't know it. He was terrified and thought, This sacred place is awesome. It's none other than God's house and the entrance to heaven. And Jacob got up early that morning, he took it, and he took the stone that he had put near his head, set it up as a sacred pillar, and poured oil on top of it. He named that sacred place Bethel. This is the word of the Lord. And um, if you are able, please stand for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel reading is from Matthew 13, 24 through 30, and 36 through 43. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like someone who planted good seed in his field. While people were sleeping, an enemy came and planted weeds among the wheat and went away. When the stalks sprouted and bore grain, then the weeds also appeared. The servants of the landowner came and said to him, Master, didn't you plant good seed in your field? Then how is it that it has weeds? An enemy has done this, he answered. The servant said to him, Do you want us to go and gather them? But the landowner said, No, because if you gather the weeds, you'll pull up the wheat along with them. Let both grow side by side until the harvest. And at harvest time, I'll say to the harvesters, First gather the weeds and tie them together in bundles to be burned, but bring the wheat into my barn. Jesus left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us this parable of the weeds in the field. Jesus replied, The one who plants the good seed is the human one. The field is the world, and the good seeds are the followers of the kingdom, but the weeds are the followers of the evil one. The enemy who planted them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the present age. The harvesters are the angels. Just as people gathered weeds and burned them in fire, so it will be at the end of the present age. The human one will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all the things that cause people to fall away and people who sin. He will throw them into a burning furnace. People there will be weeping and grinding their teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in their Father's kingdom. Those who have ears should hear. This is the word of the Lord. Our hymn of preparation is Oh How He Loves You and Me, number 2108 in The Faith We Sing.
can be seated if you want to. <laughs> I won't make you stand up all day. Our New Testament reading this morning comes from Romans chapter 8, beginning with verse 12 through 25. I wanted to read it from the Revised Standard, and the print in this is very small. So forgive me, but I'm going to read it off of my telephone. <laughs> It is turned off, though. It won't ring. So hear the word. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh, nor if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness that our, with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is not seen is not hope. For who hopes in what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So our passage today picks up with the word, so then. So then. In some translations it says, therefore. <laughs> therefore. So you know that what's preceded this is leading into what's next. So with that in mind, I want us to read the last two verses from last week, verse 10 and 11 of chapter 8. But if Christ is in you, through the body, though the body is dead to sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies. Also, through his spirit that dwells in you. So we pick up and it says, So then, <laughs> brothers and sisters, you, we are debtors. We are debtors, but we're not debtors to the flesh. For we no longer live according to the flesh, for the flesh dies away. But we live by the Spirit, which put flesh to death, so that we can live. Not only so that we can live here now, but so that we can live for all of eternity. Verse 14 says, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. Wait, what? Is that, is that right? Wait, let's read that one more time. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. Y'all, we're children of God. We're children of the God, the God who created all things, the God who created us, the God who, who created everything that you see. He created the, the, the beautiful sunrises and the beautiful sunsets. He is the God that is all-powerful. He is the God that is all-knowing. He is the God that is all-loving. That God, the magnificent, amazing God of the creation, we're his children. Oh my gosh, does that make you excited? Because I'm here to tell you, I'm excited to be a child of, the, of God this morning. I'm excited to know that I'm a daughter of God Almighty, the creator of the world. Children of Almighty God and creator of of the heavens. 
Verse 15, Paul goes on to say, You did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into, into fear. We're not fear because we don't walk in the flesh, so we're not fearful. We have been given instead a spirit of adoption. I don't know if there's anybody in this room that's been adopted, but one of my best friends in the whole world was adopted. And for her to tell her story is just such a beautiful story. And she always says this. She always says, my parents could have chosen anybody, but they chose me. They chose me to be part of their family. You know, that's what God has done for us. He has chosen you, and he has chosen me to be adopted into his family. It is with a spirit of adoption that God says, hey, I choose you. I choose you to be part of my family. There's a chorus that I love of, of, a, of a hymn. It's, 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 I haven't heard it in a long time. And then, and then uh, this morning, uh, gosh, early this morning when I was reading back through all of this and I was praying and I was stuff, this song came to my mind. And I'm not going to sing it for you. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm not going to sing it for you, but I want to read the lyrics to the chorus for you. It says, I'm so glad to be part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Joint heirs with Jesus as we travel this side, for I'm part of the family, the family of God. Look at the person next to you and say, hello, brother, hello, sister. <laughs> we are family. We are the family of God. Verse 15 says that with the Spirit, we are able to cry out, Abba, Father. Abba, Father. The translation of the word Abba, it's a, it's a very casual, more intimate name for Father. And so when you, when you hear the word Abba, it can actually be translated as Daddy. Daddy. Don't you love that? I tell people all the time, I said, look, look, Jesus was a Southerner. <laughs> he, he called his father Daddy. Right? He was a southerner. He called, he called his father daddy. And then when he came to earth, he introduced his father to us as an intimate, loving daddy. Verse 16, the Holy Spirit agrees with our spirit that we are children of God. We are children of God. Our spirit that lives within us connects with the Holy Spirit of God that indwells us and it agrees that we are God's children. But it's so much more than that. We're not only God's children, we are heirs of God. Gosh, what does it mean to be an heir to somebody? It means that you receive an inheritance. Can you imagine what the inheritance of God looks like? Wow. The God of all things. We inherit from him his glory. We inherit from him his love, his amazing gift to us. We are not only heirs with God, but we are joint heirs with with Jesus Christ. Jesus came to make a way for us to be redeemed back to the Father. And but the Bible says that if we suffer with him, we will also be glorified with him. We'll be glorified with him. If anyone has ever told you, once you say yes to Jesus, your life is going to be perfect. <laughs> no problems. Everything's going to be smooth sailing from that point on. You don't ever have to worry about anything. It's going to be smooth, right? If anybody's ever told you that, they were lying to you because that's not the truth. Truth is, we're going to probably suffer because we live in a world where there's a lot of suffering going on. We live in a fallen world, so there's, there's suffering that happens to people. And yes, suffering happens to good people, good, godly Christians people so we will have some suffering 
We will. And, and there's going to be suffering. But Jesus told us, hey, you can expect that. In this world, you will have trouble. Then he said, but take heart, because I've overcome the world. In the end, we receive the inheritance. And that's what it's all <laughs> about. It's all about being glorified with him. And in the end, we will be glorified with him. This life is not always easy, and God doesn't tell us that we're going to live happy, go lucky. He doesn't say we're going to be okay all the time, or we're going to be laughing all the time. But he does give us a very deep down joy. A joy, a joy that only comes from the Lord. A joy that when you can be in the midst of hurting, in the midst of suffering, you can feel the joy of the Lord. He also gives us that peace that passes all understanding. That peace that comes from the Lord. Verse 18 says, and this is my favorite verse today. It says, I believe that the present suffering is nothing compared to the coming glory that is to be revealed to us. Yes, we'll probably have some suffering here in this world. There may be somebody who, who comes up to you and says, yeah, I don't even believe what you think. I, I don't believe what you're saying is right. I don't think what you're doing is right. I, yeah, I don't really believe in this Jesus that you're talking about. You know, and when they do that, we just have to smile and just say, he loves you so much. We love you because he loves us. Sometimes you're just going to have to stand and be bold in your faith and bold in standing and declaring what God has done in your life. As humans in this world, we see suffering everywhere. And some of us probably are experiencing maybe suffering even this morning. But it doesn't compare to the glory that's going to be coming our way. I want to share with you a story. My, when my mom was, was really, really sick, um, and after she had told the doctor, no more surgery, I'm done. It's time to call it a day. <laughs> we moved her into hospice. And for the first 48 hours that my mom was in hospice, they could not get her pain medication figured out. And she was just moaning and groaning. And, and every now and then, I would just... Um, grab her hand and just hold her hand and pray with her and it, it would just kept going on and on and on all night long she would be quiet for a little while and then she'd start groaning again and then I, I put my head down and I just I just, was just praying for her but I had my head down on the bed because I was so tired and and about that time I heard her go oh and it wasn't like the sound she had been making. And I opened my eyes, and I can't even describe to you what her face looked like. She had this look, it was like an, of astonishment. Of, of, she was like in awe of something. And she was staring at the corner of the room. And she was smiling with this big smile, and she had this look on her face. And I said, Mama, what do you see? What, what is it? What do you see? And she couldn't even speak. And I said, oh, I wish that I could just get a glimpse, just a little glimpse of what you're seeing. Because I believe with all my heart at that very moment, I believe God was giving her just a glimpse of what glory was going to look like for her in just a few days. Then a few days later, she went to be with Jesus. And I'm sure when she saw him face to face, it was glory, glory, glory. It's going to be so amazing. It's going to be amazing. All the suffering that we've had here in this world, all of the things we've gone through here, they're just going to fade away. They're going to fade away. When we see Jesus face to face in all of his glory, 
The whole creation, it says in the scripture, awaits the day that Jesus returns. On that day, it says that creation is breathless with anticipation. Because creation cannot wait till God reveals his sons and his daughters. That's us. And on the day that Jesus comes and on the day that, that he, he brings the kingdom to earth, on the day that, that he comes and, and he stands in authority and he brings peace, on that day, it's known as the day that redemption comes to our bodies. These bodies, these bodies, I don't know about you, but there's times when I've sat too long and I try to get up and I go, oh, on my knee, on my back, right? And the older I get, the more groaning I seem to do. Because our bodies are decaying. Our bodies are wearing out. And it says in the scripture that the whole of creation is wearing out. It's decaying. And so even creation is waiting for the day when Jesus returns. When the world... <laughs> stops decaying, when, when our bodies stop decaying, when there's no more pain, there's no more suffering, there's no more anger, there's no more hatred, there's no more sin. On that day, there will be glorious celebration because we will be free and we will have our redemptive bodies, our bodies that will last for all of eternity. The Spirit gives us those first fruits, it says, the first fruits of redemption. But on the day that the Lord comes, we will receive our heavenly bodies. And we will be fully redeemed forever. No more hurt, no more pain. Right now, while we wait, which it says we're to wait patiently, I'm not very patient. I'm, I, I admit there's times when I'm ready to go. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. So it's hard for me to be patient while waiting on the Lord. But the Lord wants us to wait on him. And on his return, we will live. We will leave the fallen world that we live in. The sins of all humanity will all of a sudden be created. It's all good. We won't be groaning anymore. The whole creation, created world will not be groaning anymore. These temporary vessels that we live in, we won't have to wait any longer. We will receive full redemption, and we will be adopted children of God. That's great news, isn't it? We end up this this scripture today with these last two verses, and it talks about hope. It talks about hope. It says, it says, if we see what we hope for, then that's not hope. If we can see it, there's no need to hope for it. We've already seen it. Well, but our hope is in what's unseen. What is unseen because what we hope for and what we wait for patiently is Jesus. What is our hope? Our hope is Jesus Christ, the hope of all glory. And our hope as believers in Jesus Christ is that one day, we will spend all of eternity. We will be glorified because of Jesus and his righteousness. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to invite you to pray with me. There's a prayer of confession printed in your bulletin. Would you join me as we confess to our Lord? All merciful, tender God, you have given birth to our world, conceiving and bearing all that lives and breathes. We come to you as your daughters and sons, aware of our aggression and anger, our drive to dominate and manipulate others, 
We ask you to forgive us, and by the gentle touch of your spirit, help us to find a renewed sense of compassion that we may truly live as your people in service to all. Amen. Would you join me in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If our ushers will come forward, we will receive our morning offering. Pray with me. Father God, thank you so much. Thank you for, um, gosh, just the tithes and the offerings that we offer up to you. Lord, thank you. You are the giver of all things, and we thank you that we have the privilege to give back to you. Lord, use this, multiply it for your kingdom. And Lord, any way that you could 
can use this, Lord, we just give it to you with open hands. Bless it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing hymn is The Spirit Sends Us Forth to Serve, number 2241, In the Faith We Sing. You can look in your bulletins and see that there's lots of announcements. Um, one of the things I want to encourage you to do, we are still collecting uniforms for uh, Boyd Elementary. Uh, you can bring those, um, put them in the narthex out here, or you can bring them and put them on the bench outside the church office, and we will find them. <laughs> um, we also want to to make sure that you um, know that we're also, are we also still doing stew pot? Peanut butter? Ravioli, any kind of canned, something that would be easy uh, to microwave. Um, ravioli type SpaghettiOs, <laughs> that, that type of thing. Um, please bring that. They, they always seem to be out of peanut butter. Uh, that's true at almost every, every place that I know that about that. So, and coffee, but we gave them a lot of coffee Friday. So, uh, so thank you for, for already giving what you have given, and please continue as we support this, this great ministry. Um, uh, thurs on Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday, <laughs> getting my nights messed up. Wednesday night we're going to do Theology on Tap at Howland Miles. Uh, you're welcome to come join us. Um, it'll be a night, I'm sure, of fun and very interesting conversation, to say the least. Uh, but anytime you can gather together and talk about the Lord is always good. So uh, you're welcome to come and join us for that and fellowship with us. Um, I'm not sure what else. Am I missing something major? <laughs> Steve? <laughs> no? Okay. Um, I didn't bring my bulletin down with me. I thought that's pretty good off the top of my head. What do you think? <laughs> Anyway, thank you so much for coming today. I hope you all have an amazing week. Um, last week was great, so this weekend is going to be even greater. And uh, we're just going to praise the Lord every step of the way. So uh, receive the benediction. As you leave, go in the power of the Holy Spirit. And as the Holy Spirit leads you, uh, just remember that, that you are a child of God, that he has called you son, and he has called you daughter, and he loves you. And he is always, always going to protect you through crazy times, through suffering. He will always be there for us. So be blessed and go in the power of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Mm -hmm.